my first musical memory, which I can actually grasp in my hand, was a birthday, maybe my third birthday, when my parents gave me a, a drum kit. I still have the cymbal, but the snare drum and the bass drum I'd beaten through before the week was over. I was lucky to grow up in a musical house. My father had a professional jazz band when he was at university who made a number of recordings which we, which were on 78s, which we played until you could not hear nothing but the crackles. He had met my mother when she ran a record store and he went to the store every day for a year to ask her to go out to dance and bought one 78 record every year. And at the end of a whole year, he said, I've spent almost everything I own in this shop. Will you now please come out dancing with me? Which is how the two got together. There was music in the house all the time. My sister was a librarian. She also worked in the music library, brought home all kinds of things for me to listen to taught me how to read music. Uh, I think as a young kid I thought that was completely normal. I realize now it wasn't how lucky I was. I was a drummer and so much of my experience was through, of music, was through rhythm and percussion. And I think actually the first orchestra I ever heard was the Merseyside Youth Orchestra when I was about eight. And once I'd heard it I wanted to join it. And I was very lucky to be able to join it at the age of 10, nearly 11, probably. I was far too young to be in the orchestra, of course, but I absolutely loved it. And the older musicians in the orchestra were surprisingly tolerant of this ridiculous young kid, I think. Hilariously, one of the percussionists in the orchestra, Annie Oakley, then was with me as a percussionist in the Birmingham Orchestra throughout my tenure as conductor there. So sometimes the world turns in strange ways. Now, as a strange kid, as any classical musician is, the Liverpool Philharmonic Hall was actually my second home. I went to every rehearsal I could possibly get into, every one I was allowed to and a number of them that I wasn't allowed to. Sometimes I would hide in corners so I could creep into the hall where nobody could see me. I had lessons from violinists uh, in the orchestra uh, and from John Ward, uh, the great percussionist. I was always there. I was there under uh, the principal conductor, John Pritchard. I was there for all the years of Sir Charles Groves. I heard the 125th anniversary concert conducted by Sir Malcolm Sargent, Walton's Belshazzar's Feast, uh, riotous and unforgettable. And I heard more concerts and rehearsals than I can possibly imagine. It was a concert in the Philharmonic Hall conducted by George Hurst of the Mahler's Second Symphony that changed my life. Some people would probably say for the worse, it was the point where I decided to become a conductor, that I realized I wanted to be in the middle of this, not just simply to be playing the percussion, although there's nothing very simple about playing percussion. The first orchestra to call me after I won the Bournemouth competition when I was 19 was the Liverpool Philharmonic bringing me back home, as it were. I'd already been conductor of the Merseyside Youth Orchestra for uh, a couple of years, and they invited me to come and conduct in the industrial series. And I chose to conduct a piece I'd never conducted before, but I'd heard in Liverpool about five years previously for the first time, Sibelius's Fifth Symphony which is a piece that's remained through me, with me for my entire life. When I look back, of course, it's not only working in the Phil as a conductor that was important to me. I was also 
a reasonably frequent percussionist in the orchestra uh, as a student and in my early 20s. And I'm so glad to have actually seen what life, touring, traveling, tough life in a professional orchestra was, was like, uh, and the humor and warmth with which the players led their life uh, was really, really a great experience. But I suppose, as with all of us, these were the first seminal experiences. Uh, and I keep Liverpool absolutely at the back of my mind. We were all young teenagers together, experiencing, for instance, the first ever Marla cycle to be played in Europe by the same conductor and orchestra, Sir Charles Groves and the Liverpool Philharmonic. Impossible as it seems to believe now, this was pioneering work. And I can remember all of us being in a daze at hearing these pieces to a year for, for five years. When I went back in 2008, after a long time, there were only two musicians still playing in the orchestra who had played in the very first concert, but we played the Sibelius Fifth again. Uh, and this was not only a sentimental experience, but a beautiful experience. It's the kind of music the orchestra has in its blood, uh, and it played so wonderfully. I, I, I know and I hope that Liverpool is proud of its orchestra, and it knows how wonderfully it plays. It's amazing to think that the Merseyside Youth Orchestra is 65 years old. Now, that presumably means that I'm no longer 21. The orchestra I know goes from strength to strength. Uh, it's been a few years since I conducted it, and our conductors' lives get decided very, very far in advance. Uh, and I've been booked through for the next year for many, many years. And so to do a concert is not a possibility. But every now and then I come to Liverpool to visit my sister. Maybe I'll be allowed to pop into a rehearsal and conduct something and, and hear how it's going. And finally, yes, I very much hope I will be on the podium in the fill once again. It's still deep in my heart. It's still home. It's a great hall. It's a great public. It's a wonderful city. So, I hope it will be relatively soon and it'll be a treat whenever it is. Mm -hmm.